Good morning, license holders. Wishing you a very happy new year from our main office here in Chicago. Welcome to the One License January webinar. It's intentionally designed for new users and for those who need a refresher course. I'm very happy to have you all here. It looks like we're near 200 live viewers and we keep climbing. So a very, very, very warm welcome to each and every one of you. A few notes here. Uh, the webinar will run no longer than one hour in length. So it really all depends on that Q&A section that we have towards the end of the broadcast. In the coming days, the webinar will be posted to our blog, news.onelicense.net. That's N-E-W-S dot onelicense.net. Uh, those of you uh, who have visited the website before know that it is a really incredibly helpful resource uh, for blog posts, uh, for webinars, just like this one that we're having today, tutorial videos, updated news, things like that. So there you can rewatch this exact video that we're broadcasting today, and you can also share it with your teams. Know that this webinar only requires the use of your speakers or your headphones. There's no need to have a microphone or a video camera as you are an audience member. And before we watch our overview video here, I'd like to invite you to get out a piece of paper and a pen so you're able to take some notes throughout our session. Let's just watch this video together. One license, download, create, report. Once you're a subscriber, you'll have access to thousands of downloadable music image files from our catalog of member publishers. And our outstanding database will help you make sure the song or text you're looking for is covered. Creating worship aids, bulletins, and projections has never been easier. Search for your song and download high resolution music image files all in one place. By taking advantage of the most up-to-date technology, our website makes it easy to report the titles you use. This ensures authors, composers, and publishers receive fair compensation. Music directors, pastors, and their teams can report song usage 12 weeks in the past and six weeks into the future. And our convenient list feature allows you to store frequently used titles for future access or to download your entire list of songs at the click of a button. One license offers annual, event, and single use reprint licenses. Annual licenses are the economical choice for those who reprint or project music on a regular basis. Event licenses are great for retreats, conferences, and conventions that are up to one week in length and single-use licenses are perfect for a wedding, funeral, or other one-time event. In addition to congregational reprint licenses, One License offers a podcast streaming license for churches to stay connected to their many members, and a practice track license for music directors to share recordings with choir members and instrumentalists to help them learn their music. The One License customer service team is here to help. Our intelligent ticketing system and phone support ensure that your questions are promptly addressed. Email us at info at onelicense.net or call us at 1-800-663-1501. We believe in the power of music to connect and inspire communities. One License allows congregations to make the most of our member publishers' music, providing access to the finest music for the worshiping assembly. Whether you're using our service on an annual or a one-time basis, we're proud to offer our support. One License, inspiring congregational song. I'd like to introduce our license holder support agent, Kathy Connolly, who will explain the Q&A process for our webinar today. Good morning, license holders. This is Kathy Connolly, your license holder support agent, and I'll be helping with the Q&A process today. I have the pleasure of speaking to many of you over email through our online ticketing system, and that's exactly how we'll be answering your questions today. There's two ways to submit a question. The best way to submit a question is through the contact link in the upper right hand corner after you are already logged into the website. Since you are logged in, our team will be able to see your organization name and license number, allowing us to find your account faster. You can also email info at onelicense.net, which will submit your question. Note that in both of these instances, you must write webinar in the subject or message, so we know you are watching us live. Questions will be answered in the middle and at the end of the call. Note that if your question is too specific to your organization, we'll respond via email within one business day. Our online ticketing system is the best and fastest way to get a hold of the license holder support team. 
Fantastic, Kathy. Thank you so much. We'll certainly be keeping an eye on those over the course of the next 50 minutes or so. Um, if they're applicable in the moment, then we'll certainly bring them up and ask them. Otherwise, as Kathy mentioned, in the middle and at the end of the call is when we'll be taking those questions. So I'd like to give you an overview, a summation of the first section of the website. So here we are on the outside. You'll notice that we're not logged in at this moment. Um, so I know that there are a number of you on this call who don't have licenses yet. Uh, you're using this as an opportunity to see if this service is applicable for you. And the first thing that I want to bring your attention to is this search music titles bar that's right here. One license is incredibly transparent about what we cover and what we don't cover. That way there's no confusion for you at all. I have to mention these two things here. One license offers copyright reprints of congregational music only. So music for choirs, instrumentalists, cantors, accompanists, things like that are not going to be covered. They're expressly not covered through this license. So you'll need to contact those publishers of that music directly in order to obtain those appropriate copies for them. But if you're using our service for your congregational reprints, perhaps as a bulletin resource, uh, creating a worship aid or a leaflet, like how we have listed here on the website, uh, that is an applicable and appropriate use of our website. I also need to mention that we're primarily a reporting service and we are secondarily a downloading service. What that means is that the member publishers that we work with, and we'll bring your attention to that list on this tab right here in just a few minutes, there's about 160 of them that we work with. We cover the music from their catalogs for you to be able to report. The only exception to this are a few different Lutheran liturgical settings, which are covered under Augsburg Fortress. Uh, those are few and far between and not included on the website. But the vast majority of the publishers that we work with, their catalogs are available for you to report. That does not necessarily mean that there will be a download available. That's entirely up to the publisher's discretion. Uh, there are some publishers that have a very robust presence on our website, uh, folks like OCP, World Library, GIA. Uh, there are other publishers that just don't. They either don't have the means or they have their own individual permission issues for why they don't provide those resources. Uh, there are some services, I know things like Sundays and Seasons and Write Song and things like that, where you can get a copy of the music from those other websites and then the expectation is that you're reporting them through one license. So again, one license is primarily a reporting service and then secondarily a downloading service. That distinction is really important. So for those of you who are looking for some of that transparency, I'll give you an example here. All Are Welcome, very popular song by Marty Haugen. You'll notice that it comes up here on the website. It looks like it's the fifth version down here. Few different versions that you have uh, to be able to use. So you'll see that there's a version from Dakota Road, a version from ILP, there's a version from Jenny, Jesse Man Abuse and an OCP. So you'll want to take a look at the first line here, the contributors, or maybe even the additional copyright information that's listed to be sure that you're choosing the right title. So all are welcome, Marty Haugen is exactly what I was searching for. And I can click on view more versions and I can see the list of all of the different versions that are applicable here. Notice that the preview links will bring up an intentionally blurry JPEG image. And that again is for our sense of transparency so you know what's covered and what isn't. And if you attempt to download a PDF or a TIFF file, it will prompt you to purchase a license. Uh, so that information is the intellectual copyright of that publisher or copyright holder. So it's really important um, that there's a locked version of the website and an unlocked version of the website. So you'll see there's a variety of different hymnals that have resources that are covered here, a variety of different uh, styles of downloads and different resources. You can even bring up a clip to listen to the file. In case you need help deciphering between all of the different versions of All Are Welcome that are listed here, it may be helpful for you to have that listen tab. So again, that's in the spirit of transparency on the website. One license works uh, with a three-step process, download, create, and report. Uh, so we give you the ability to have these downloads, again, if the member publisher has provided them. We give you the opportunity to then take those resources and create your own worship aid, bulletin, projection screen, et cetera. And here's where I'll also pause and mention that One License is not a worship aid creating service. We give you the tools, we empower you with the physical pieces of music, so that way you can then create what is best for your organization. So I know my own personal church, uh, we have a seasonal booklet that we use. Uh, there are plenty of organizations that have supplemental hymnals. Uh, we would really help 
helpful blog post about that last year. I encourage you to take a look at that. So there's a variety of different ways that churches use our service to engage their congregation in worship. The final step of this reporting, clicking on that green report button is incredibly important. That's how you notify us that you've used the title. There's a distinction for the number of times that you used it or during that specific weekend. And then beyond that, we then pay out those royalties. So staying on top of your reporting is incredibly important. Uh, not only is it important to us, but it's also a justice issue for our composers. So making sure that they are compensated for the work that they provide for the church. You'll see that we have some select member publishers that are listed here. These are more of our premier folks uh, and names that you may recognize right away. And then I'll bring you to attention to our news and announcements section. Uh, so our blog, like I mentioned earlier, news.onelicense.net, a wildly helpful resource. Uh, there's at least one, if not two or three posts that are added each month. For those of you who get our monthly newsletter, there's a summation of those that's included there. Uh, so you'll see that our most recent ad here, uh, the year in review, if you click on that, it's going to redirect you to our blog site here. So again, news.onelicense.net, just add the word news in front of it, and then you'll be able to pull up our site. Perhaps if you'd like to search for the supplemental hymnal uh, comment that I had made earlier, you can see that here. So you can search for it in the upper right-hand corner. If you have questions about payment or invoice-related things, uh, you can search the word payment and then that will come up. That'll give you the instructions for how we do wire transfers and international payments and things like that. If you were looking for help with podcasting, you can look at this article, an in-depth look at the podcast streaming license. So this search button up here in the upper right-hand corner can be incredibly helpful. Again, if you're a new user to our website, if you're getting yourself established, um, the folks who were users with us in November received this in their monthly newsletter. But if you're just getting yourself caught up, then it may be a good idea to take a look at those. I'll also bring your attention, we did a uh, kind of year in review for the end of 2017, and this listed um, not only uh, some year in review statistics, uh, 1.5 million services and masses reported, 800,000 titles reported, which is, which is just amazing, 150,000 music image files and MP3s that are available, and over 65,000 titles that are in our song catalog. Uh, but then additionally beyond that, we kind of rounded out our top 10 posts of 2017. Uh, so if, again, if you're kind of new to our system and you want to take a look at what all of this is like, uh, starting with these top 10 posts would be really helpful. Um, so for those of you who were licensing online mergers with us in January of last year, uh, you will have received a lot of this information over the course of the last year. Uh, some of you just joined us uh, with WLP that became a member publisher in March of last year. We also had an acquisition of Word of Life International that happened in July out in Australia. Uh, so needless to say, it has been an incredibly busy year for the one licensed staff. So lots of really helpful resources for you to go through here. Going back to the website, I'll bring you to the very bottom here, just our footer. You can click on the FAQ section. You can also read a little bit about us. That contact button is the exact same one that you have in the upper right hand corner of the screen. You can also view our video tutorials. There's a brochure that you can download. Uh, for those of you that use StreamSpot, we have a partners page listed here. And then our contact information is listed here as well. Uh, so for those of you who email us asking what our address is for sending in a check, here it is for you here. And the email address info at onelicense.net. Coming back up to the top of the page, just to give you an idea of what these other two tabs look like. Uh, the How It Works tab is going to have a, a pretty basic overview of what all of the different licenses are that we cover. The podcast streaming license, the practice track license, those are both addendums onto the annual reprint license that you would have had. Uh, the practice track license can be purchased separately. Uh, there's also an overview on reporting titles and then our tutorial videos as well. So how it works is really helpful. Uh, for that video that we showed right in the beginning, uh, and just in case you missed it, you can access that here. So again, on the How It Works page, you can access it right from this link. Uh, that might be a really good resource, especially if you're considering a license with us to share with your pastor or your liturgy team to give kind of an overrounding sense of what it is that we do. The Member Publishers tab here is constantly being updated, constantly being updated. Uh, so brand new publishers that we just had join uh, McCrimmon, I'm thinking of, so just searching MC, you'll have them listed right there. The day that we uh, have their information back from them is when they go live on the website. 
Um, if you were to search for someone like GIA, uh, you would see that there's a number of catalogs that are listed underneath them. Uh, so folks like uh, Tize community, Walton Music, the Iona community, those are all covered as GIA administers those, uh, at least in North America. So just to give you an idea, our member publisher page is searchable because it's quite a lot to scroll through. One last page here on the external portion of the website is the options and prices page. Uh, so you'll see that there's new pricing that was released uh, for 2018. Uh, so you could take a look at that for your budgetary reasons. Uh, annual licenses, school licenses, single use, and event, and then also our practice track licenses as well. So you can be on top of what those uh, prices are for those. I'll mention for single use and event licenses, those are a bit different than annual and they're all based on the time period. So a single use license is a one day license that covers one or more services within a 24 hour period. So for example, if you don't have an annual license with us, but you would like to have a license for your Christmas services, typically Christmas Eve and Christmas Day are within a 24 hour period. So you can have one single use license that you have for that entirety of your Christmas celebration. Uh, something like uh, Holy Week, um, definitely looking from Holy Thursday into the Easter Vigil into Easter Sunday uh, for those who celebrate those events. Um, the event license is what's going to, to help you through those. So the event license covers basically anything from 24 hours to seven days. So definitely certain for mission trips, uh, for retreats, for workshops and conferences, and then also things like Holy Week and Easter. Note that you do not need a single use license or an event license if you already have an annual, if the event is taking place at that organization and the average weekly attendance category is not too overly you know, pushed to its limits. So an example for that, if you're a large church and you're also having a, an additional event, you're having a weekend retreat or you're having um, you know, an, an evening event or something like that where you're inviting people from the community or you're inviting people from other churches and things like that, you are more than welcome to use your license. You don't need to purchase an additional single use or event as long as if your attendance category, say it's 500, but you're expecting 2000 people, that's different. You're going to need a separate license for that. But if it's well within that average weekly attendance category that we have you set up for, then that's entirely fine and you can use your license for that. So Kathy, do we have any questions so far? Um, I do have one. Um, it's from someone in New York and they're asking, do they need to contact us by phone if they are trying to set up a license? That's a great question. Uh, so no, One License is an internet-based company. Uh, so you can go to um, this purchase a license link. You can also go to the options and prices page here and purchase the license directly. Uh, so there's no reason for you to call us directly. Of course, you're more than welcome to, um, but we're going to encourage you to go back to the website to get yourself familiar since that's the entirety of how the company is built. Um, everything that you need is on the website, the reporting, the searching, the downloading, et cetera. Um, the only time that you would need to give us a call is if you're confused about maybe um, the contact information that we already have on file. Um, if you're trying to reset your password and you know that your email address isn't in the system, that's when it can get kind of tricky, especially if a music director left, didn't leave any information, and then here you are in a new position and you're kind of building this thing from the ground up. So we certainly don't want to have duplicate accounts in the system. Um, there's no reason why when we search your zip code, we should see more than one account for your church. Um, so we certainly want to help in the clarification of that. Uh, but in terms of just a general license purchase, absolutely go to the website. Um, if you're a single user or an event license holder and you log in, uh, the system will prompt you to buy a license since you might not already have an active one at that time. So great question. Anything else, Kathy? That's all for right now. Okay, great. Um, I do wanna make mention that I'm seeing some folks that are clicking um, the raise hand button. Um, note that the only way to ask us questions during this webinar, especially if you missed Kathy's kind of listing of that in the beginning, um, to email us info, I-N-F-O at onelicense.net uh, or sending us an email through our ticketing system, which is here in this contact button. If you're logged in, it'll give us really helpful information like your license number, uh, your location, things like that, so we don't have to look up that information. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not able to answer the raised hand commentaries, uh, only able to answer the Zendesk, uh, that's our ticketing system questions that, that we received. Thank you for that. Let's go to the inside of the website now. So clicking on this login button in the upper right-hand corner, 
If you need help resetting your password, there's that link there. Uh, we can also help you reset your password if you give us a call. Uh, it's the same exact email that we're going to send. So whether it comes from the website or it comes from us, it's the same process. So first and foremost, you'll see here that I have an unpaid invoice. So my account is alerting me that there's something that I need to take care of. I can take a look at that invoice by clicking on the link and I can see the invoice here. I can print that invoice if I need to pass that along to a treasurer. I can also take care of paying for that with a visa card. Note that at the present moment, as of January 10th, 2018, uh, we aren't able to receive electronic checks. So that's the reason why there's that um, little notification that's there. So we're hoping that that goes away in time. Since we're on this uh, licenses page here, you can also access it by clicking on the My Profile link from the My Account dropdown menu. We go back to the My Profile page, you'll see that there's the listing of my organization. You'll see my email address here and that's how I can reset my password. My organization profile lists any type of address or phone number updates, so incredibly important to have that information updated for us. You'll see the different licenses that you have under the licenses tab. So you can see the annual license that you have here. I wanna draw your attention to this green button. It's incredibly important. You can click view invoice to view your invoice, just like we saw a few moments ago. You can download a copy of the terms of agreement. This is gonna be really important for your liturgy teams, uh, for those in your business office that really like to read that fine print. I encourage you to take a look at all of that. And then the welcome packet is going to include all of these things. So the welcome packet, many of you have had that from us before. Uh, you can download a copy of it here for yourself. You can also write in an email to us and we'd be happy to forward one to you. Uh, but again, you can get it immediately by clicking on this link. It's going to include a few different things. Number one, your invoice. Number two, a welcome letter from us. Number three, the terms of agreement and then number four, the helpful instructions document. Uh, so that's something that we keep updated pretty consistently whenever there are changes, uh, though they are few and far between. Uh, so that welcome packet's incredibly helpful. Purchasing additional licenses here uh, would help me purchase any other additional things that I would need, but I don't since I already have a practice drug license on this account. User account is where I can add a user. So for example, if you have your secretary or a music assistant who is helping you with your reporting, or if you wanted to add a treasurer uh, as a billing contact, you're welcome to do that. Uh, I do recommend that you add the user to the newsletter so that way you can stay up to date with our information. Uh, unless we have a special event like a webinar or something like that, we only email once a month. Uh, those monthly kind of overviews are really important. So anyone who's actually using the website, so actually reporting, searching, downloading, et cetera, uh, those tutorial kind of based monthly newsletters are gonna be really important for them to stay in the loop on. Under your default settings, there's two different important kind of sections here. You can select a default worship resource. This is not required. Uh, so if you happen to use uh, the Breaking Bread 2018 hymnal, um, if you happen to use Journey Songs, if you happen to use One in Faith, if you happen to use Gather Third Edition, right, you can indicate which hymnal is your kind of default resource. So that way those results populate to the top. Again, not required, just a nice little filter. Think of it as a filter here for you. Um, I will comment here that worship resources are available if the member publisher has provided them to us. So I mentioned earlier that there are a variety of different ways that member publishers participate with One License. Some of them just give us their titles for reporting. Some give us titles and downloads. And some give us titles, downloads, and linking to their hymnal resources. So there's kind of, you know, a variety of different ways that member publishers can participate. And it's really important that we don't just make assumptions about what's on the website and what isn't. There are new member publishers, again, joining us every day, new resources being added every day. Uh, so it's really, really good uh, for you to be aware of what we have and what we don't have, at least at the present moment. In terms of the average number of your services, this is where it can get a little bit confusing. So you may have three services. You may have a Saturday and then two on Sunday morning. But if the music is different at all of those services, then I'm gonna recommend that you change that number to one. If the music is the same at two of those services, say you have two on Sunday morning and then you have a teen led service in the evening that includes more contemporary music or things like that, I would say that you choose two and here's the reason. Anytime you report something, unless you change your default, it is going to multiply your report by that number. So if my number is three here, it's assuming that I'm using that music three times in that weekend. 
So helping you and aiding you and not having to click extra, you know, numbers or increase or decrease or things like that, um, it allows the services to, to be as exact as possible. Um, it allows those royalty payments out to those composers and publishers to be accurate. So again, if you have two services that are the same and a teen led service, you might wanna change your services to two. If they're all different, you wanna change it to one. And if they're all the same, then you can list it as the number of services that you have, all right? If you have questions about that, feel free to email us. Moving from the My Account tab, uh, moving from that helpful resources, we mentioned the welcome packet and the blog and things like that. Um, let's take a look at our search types and our reporting. So clicking on this report usage button underneath the My Account tab will bring you to kind of your main page where it explains everything that you have reported or everything that you have to report. So you'll notice that I have five reported titles for this specific week. Again, this is a test account. Granted, all accounts are going to look different. Uh, some of you have services every week and some of you don't. So you'll see a zero reported titles here. If I have titles that I need to report, I'll need to click on that manage button or I'll need to search for those titles and report them. So a few things about this page here. The system will let you report 12 weeks in the past and six weeks into the future. So be sure to write that down on your piece of paper. The system will let you report 12 weeks in the past and six weeks into the future. So as of the, the speaking and writing of this webinar, it's January 10th. So we can go as far back as October 12th and we can go as far in the future as February 22nd. Any titles that you have from before the first week that are listed, you need to submit them under any available week. Now we encourage you to stay on top of your reporting. For some of you, that's weekly if you use a lot of music. For some of you, that might be monthly. Uh, but it's certainly not once a year. It's certainly not once every two years. Um, I know that there are some users that think that they can log in and report whenever they would like. And ultimately what that does is makes those royalty reports ineffective and inaccurate. We wanna make sure that the music that we are using those royalty reports are submitted to those publishers and those composers and that they are paid accurately and correctly for their works. So please do report every single instance of what you reprint. That means that if you show just the words, yes, you need to report that. It's implied performance. You're not going to read the words. You're going to sing the words. If you're just going to list the music, again, yes, you must report it. If you list the words and music, yes, you must report it. So some of this confusion comes into play when you have like a mass setting, for example, and just the words are up on a screen or just the words are written in the worship aid. You still have to report the usage of that because it's implied performance. I know that we don't use the word performance when it comes to worship, so please understand my, my using of that phrase right now, all right? You can duplicate any of your weeks, so say if you're using the same music for all of Lent, uh, you can input it into that one week and then you can duplicate it all the way down. That could be really helpful. To report that you have nothing to report for a given week, you would click on whatever week that is. I'll choose these three just as an example. I'll click on the select action and mark as nothing to report and click apply. So you'll see that I have zero reported titles, but I'm confirming that I have zero reported titles. The red alerts me that I have zero reported titles. So in order to kind of skip those reminder emails that we send to you and to communicate to us that you haven't used anything, again, mark, or in this case, unmark if you've made a mistake, nothing to report. You can click on a specific week to manage it. And that will open up all of the details for that specific week so you can remind yourself what you reported and what you have not. I can edit the number of services right here. So perhaps we only used this one for one service or we used it for five services. I can edit that here. I can also delete a title if I need to. I can also download all available files. So note here that it doesn't list for me what files are available and what files aren't. That's on a different page, but any files that are available, they will download here into a zip file. So a zip file is essentially just a large file uh, that comes onto your, likely your desktop, depending on your operating system, uh, that includes all of those files. I want to make mention of this blue save report button here. This blue button is a feel good button. 
We live in a culture that encourages us to save, save, save. And I will tell you that the titles that are here, they're saved. If you see a title here, it's on your report. There's no additional need to notify us or to save it or anything, but because we live in a culture that says we must save, we have this feel good button here for you. And it tells you that your report is saved, is saved successfully. All right, so just a little bit of humor there for you. Quick reporting tools here for the bottom. Uh, these are titles that have been used commonly, so you can kind of come back to those. Uh, titles that are most often reported would be listed here. And then reporting titles from a list would be here. So let's talk about that for a moment. I made mention earlier of the supplemental hymnal resources. There's that really helpful blog post about that. So please take a look at those. The community songbook would list any of the titles that I had used um, essentially in a, in a, um, in a supplemental hymnal. Um, so you'll notice that you may have you know, 50 titles that are in the songbook, but you're only using five or six of them on a given weekend. So you can apply the songbook and you can edit it from there. So it's just a little bit easier to, to kind of create, um, you know, memories for yourself so you don't have to go back and search for titles all over again. Okay, so you can be mindful of that from there. Clicking in the upper left hand corner, you can search by the different mass settings that are available. So there's no reason to type them into the search bar. You'll see that the revised order of masses are on the left, and then the original mass settings are here on the right. There are some Lutheran organizations that use those. We're going to search for the revised order of massive creation specifically, and you'll see that all of the titles are listed here. So regardless of how many you're actually going to use, at least it's a really central way of finding all of them. Since I'm logged in, I can click on this PDF button and I can download a copy of it. So you'll see that that's downloading in the upper right hand corner of my screen. I can also download a copy of the TIFF version. Uh, so to explain the differences between those, PDFs um, have a lot of margin to them, uh, so they aren't really editable. Uh, there's a lot of white space that's around them. Uh, TIFFs go all the way, they're cropped completely to the staff line. Uh, so it allows you to expand the file a little bit more um, or not worry about any types of margins within your worship aids. So I would say that if you're really pressed for space, um, using the TIFF is going to be better for you. Uh, I prefer to use TIFFs because with PDFs, I just end up cropping it anyway. Uh, so I encourage you to, to play around with that. You'll remember that we also have this JPEG preview file. So you can pull that up and just confirm that that is in fact what you're looking for if you need to do so. If the listen button is provided, you can click on that as well. So that's how to search for math settings. Uh, Lutheran liturgical settings are the same thing. So hold an evening prayer, uh, vespers, things like that are all listed here. I'd like to show you one or two other ways of searching. Um, we're going to search by title and by composer. So searching by title for By the Waters of Babylon is going to bring up every version or every instance, just like a Google search, of these words that are in our system. You may find that searching with the composer's added last name allows that to bubble to the top, all right? It's the same thing as typing in All Are Welcome Haugen or something like that. It will bubble up to the top. So there's two different versions of it that are listed here. We have a preview image again that we can take a look at. There's also the Psalm version that's listed here. So that may look a bit different. And the reason why I pull up this version is because I want to bring your attention to this listing right here, Gather 3rd Edition number 672. So searching for this title, I most certainly can type it in here. I also most certainly can search by the hymnal resource. So again, this isn't going to be available for all member publishers. This is a really high level way of searching. But searching by hymnal and page number is going to bring up only one version for me to look at. All right, so that gives you some options for that. I'll bring your attention also to a, a psalm setting here. So I'm looking for The Lord is Kind and Merciful by Jeannie Cotter. So if I enter the psalm number 103, and then I search for Cotter, it will narrow those results for me. I can also search by the title I can narrow down by Psalm and search from there. So you have a lot of different options for how you want to search here, all right? Lots of different options available to you. You can also search only show matches with downloads available and that'll narrow the list down quite a bit more as well. 
So remember, clicking on view more versions will allow you to see all of the different options that are available. This green report button here, should we want to report this specific title, we can select the week, it'll automatically bring up a default for us, we can select a different week. And then if we need to edit the number of services, we can do that here. You also have the option to continue our search here if you wanted to add this to your list. So you can create a list, you can either add that to that community songbook, that supplemental hymnal resource that I was talking about earlier, uh, you're, or you can add a name for a new list. Say you're preparing for a wedding, or say you're preparing for the Easter celebration. You can kind of categorize different lists, that way you're able to find things a bit easier. I want to spend the last 10 minutes uh, on the rest of our Q&A portion uh, of our session here. Uh, thank you again for your time and attention, uh, especially during that brief power outage. Uh, so Kathy, what kind of questions do we have so far? Um, a customer, a uh, license holder is asking if you could touch on uh, using projectors for weekly masses. So I assume, how does that look as far as what their license number appears inside? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's really, really helpful information that can be found in the welcome packet. Uh, so whether you're using a projection screen, a worship aid, a bulletin, it doesn't matter to us what that looks like. Uh, but the verbiage is as follows. Reprinted with permission under one license number, and then it's A dash or S dash or E dash or whatever your number is, and then all rights reserved. So that information can be found on the FAQ page. It can also be found in the welcome packet. It has to be listed somewhere on the bulletin, somewhere on the worship aid, somewhere on the projection. Uh, you can have one big screen uh, at the very, very end. Uh, maybe it has a lovely image to it. Maybe it even has our logo that you're welcome to use. Um, you can also have it in really fine eight point print on the back of your worship aid if there's nowhere else that you can have it, you know, spatially, that's entirely fine. Um, and because I know this is also a common question, no reason to list it after every specific song. It can just be listed once. The copyright information though, however, does need to be listed. Uh, typically when you look at a download, something like that is already going to be included. Um, so you'll see here that there's the permission levels that are listed here. So that all needs to be included. You cannot crop that out. Um, if that did not come included, or if you're typing out the text file yourself, because uh, text files aren't very common on our website, uh, be sure that you write out specifically the name of the composer, the name of the publisher, et cetera. Okay, we have another question about the rehearsal license or practice track license. Um, asking, does it cover does it cover making rehearsal CDs of choral music demos and individual parts for covered publishers or only for music used in worship? That's a great question. So it covers the former, not the latter. So the practice track license is where we get into the territory of helping you as a music director. Uh, so it can include choral parts, absolutely. Uh, you can use it uh, to play that one specific part if the tenors need support uh, for just that one line. Uh, you can use it for your cantors. I've also seen some folks use it, and I think I talk about this in my blog post. Uh, they have a, a version, uh, like a CD that they distribute for weddings. Uh, so perhaps you have you know, a, a list of songs that you've sung that you've then recorded or maybe your cantor has if you're trying to advertise the different cantor options for your weddings. Um, the couple that then goes home and takes that CD, I would report that as one use uh, for each of those songs uh, because there's the implication that they're going to be listening to those songs to plan for their wedding service. Okay, I have another question. Um, we will, it says we will be using reporting, we will use reporting for our weekly YouTube video from one service. However, we have three services each Sunday morning with the same music that is in the video. For the purposes of reporting the music in our YouTube video, should we report the one occasion that is used in the video or the three that actually occur? So I would do the three that actually occur. Um, there is a different setting that you can click, um, whether it's just reprinting or whether it's reprinting and podcasting. Um, I'm assuming user that you have a podcast streaming license that is required in order for you to be on social media. YouTube includes that. Um, you are not authorized to include any music anywhere on the internet, um, including your own personal church website uh, without having that podcast streaming license. Um, so my instinct, yes, is to report each individual occurrence of the usage of those titles. Okay, here's another one. Do we have to report songs that are in the public domain? You do not 
have to report songs that are in the public domain. You do not have to report how can I keep from singing unless there's a specific arrangement uh, by a living composer. Uh, so songs that are in the public domain, the author or the composer has been dead for more than 70 years. So there's nowhere for those royalties to go. So every time you sing happy birthday, you don't pay a royalty because there's nowhere for that royalty to go. Uh, you know, we don't necessarily know, um, you know, the details always on where a song comes from. So you may have a listing of uh, African spiritual or the words traditional or the words public domain. If something like that is listed, then there's no royalty for those titles and they do not need to be reported. Also included in that, they do not need to be manually submitted. Please do not manually submit public domain songs. Okay. Um, question about uh, if we download from a particular worship uh, resource, sun Sundays and Seasons, words or words and melody line for large print and PowerPoint, do we still need to report it since we have more than enough copies of the ELW hymnal to cover our worship attendance? Does it make a difference if the contact is listed as the, if the content is listed as public domain? Sure, that's a great question. No, it does not make a difference if it's public domain. I will give um, you my reasonable accommodation answer. Um, if you have a person in your congregation who has a hard time seeing, um, if you have a person in your congregation, um, perhaps a presider who has a hard time walking and they aren't able to carry a heavy hymnal, uh, or that person has an issue with their eyesight and they can't see um, a typically printed uh, bulletin or worship aid, it is generally considered reasonable use by the publisher uh, for you to make a copy for that person. Um, so that's kind of coming back to a social justice issue, right? Um, we want to have everyone be able to participate in worship. Um, so making a, a copy for that one person or blowing it up for that one person, we would consider that to be a reasonable accommodation. And you do not need uh, to report the usage of that title. Okay, uh, next question. Are people like the text of an anthem printed in the bulletin for clarity, but they don't sing the text themselves. Should the text of an anthem be reported? Absolutely. Anything that you reprint needs to be reported. So other than that reasonable accommodation comment that I just made, if you're putting something in the bulletin, whether it's words, words and music, or both, you absolutely need to report that and you need to include that used with permission line with your license number. Okay. Um, one question here is, when you have the uh, same worship aid for five services, but perhaps one of the songs is only being sung at one of the masses, is that reported as one or five? It's absolutely reported as one. So that's where you would go back into that song and edit the number of services that you used it for. Um, again, if your default number is five, in this example with this customer, um, then it's going to multiply that song five times on the royalty report. So it's really important that the songs are listed only for each time that you actually use them. Okay, here's one. I currently have several licenses, licensing, WLP, CCLI, and one license. Do I need to continue to have the following licenses or would one license cover all but the CCLI? Great question. Uh, so my understanding is that they all cover everything but CCLI. Uh, CCLI is a different entity from us. They're a different company. Uh, they provide more praise and worship evangelical style music. Uh, so if you use contemporary songs in that vein, uh, things like what you would hear on Christian radio, things like that, um, those would be covered under CCLI and you would contact them directly. A word about licensing and then WLP. Um, there may be something that you had covered under WLP that is not covered anymore. That's a, a totally different license. You may want to reach out to them specifically. Uh, I know that they sent out a letter last year so they can answer direct questions about that. But in terms of licensing online and one license, those are now a merged company as of January of last year. Uh, so you should not be listing licensing online. You should not be getting bills from licensing online. Um, the website essentially is just used for OCP's digital subscriptions. Uh, so it really is separate. One license is your licensing agency if you are a mainline Protestant or Catholic organization. Okay, I have a question here. Um, what is the turnaround time for a manual submission? Can I use the lyrics in my worship aid while I wait to hear? 
That's a great question. Uh, so manual submissions, um, they happen few and far between. They're when a title cannot be found in the system. So I showed you a variety of different ways of searching. Uh, and sometimes a title just isn't there either because it's brand new and the publisher hasn't had a chance to, to add it yet. Uh, or again, kind of what I was discussing earlier with publishers, uh, they have a variety of different you know, means and capabilities and staff sizes and things like that. So you might not necessarily find all of the titles that you're looking for at a given moment. So going through one of those manual submissions can be kind of how you can find out um, if that song can be added or not. Uh, incredibly helpful blog post I will bring your attention to on manual submissions. Please do read that before you submit one. Um, but going back to this specific question itself, can you read it for me one more time? Sure. Um, the, asking about the turnaround time for a manual submission. And can I use the lyrics in my worship aid while I wait to hear? Thank you. So manual submissions are reviewed by the publisher primarily. Uh, some publishers only log in once or twice a year uh, before their end of their royalty period. Uh, some publishers of the bigger companies, um, they have a bit more of an active presence on the website. Um, so you may find that they get approved or denied or substituted more frequently. Um, please do not use the manual submission process to ask permission if a song is covered. If the member publisher is listed with us, then the title is covered. The manual submission process is really there for you to add titles to them. And then as far as at, uh, using the text while you wait, that's kind of in the same vein. If the member publisher is covered, you have permission to use it. If you have questions about that, uh, you're more than welcome to send us an email. Are there any more questions before we wrap up? Sure, we have one about uh, uh, using a songbook. Um, if we create and use a songbook, during our midweek Lenten services each year, would creating a community songbook and then reporting it for the weeks of use be the easiest way to handle this? Yes, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, I will bring your attention to the Supplemental Hymnals blog post um, on the blog. Again, that's news.onelicense.net. Um, really really spells out the process of how these are created, uh, the steps that are taken in order for them to be built. Um, and then the easiest thing to do, save all of those titles as a list and then report the ones that you're actually using. So you may have 50 songs that are included there, but you're only using a couple, you just report those couple. So thanks to those of you who submitted questions to us. I really appreciate the, the active engagement that we have here. Um, you license holders uh, certainly keep us on our toes with some of these questions and some of these emails. We're happy to answer all of them. And, and if we didn't get to any of them, uh, we will certainly respond with them the next business day or so. All right. Being mindful of your time and wanting to be respectful of that, I wanna thank each and every one of you for participating in our webinar call today. We will have another one at the end of February. It's technically February 28th or March 1st in Australia, uh, but that's going to be uh, geared a little bit more towards those customers in that part of the world. So if you have any questions, I encourage you to email us or you can watch this webinar again for any other uh, helpful kind of reminders. So thank you to those of us who have joined us today. We appreciate your time and attention and hope that this information was helpful and our really flies by. We hope that it can provide some uh, helpful information for creating dynamic worship in your congregation. Uh, that really is what we're all here for. We're musicians and ministers in our own right. And this is something that we deeply, deeply care about. So thank you for giving us your time and attention today. And from your Chicago team, our best to you and your ministry. Take care. <laughs>